So now let's take a look at some examples, and I'm going to use this basketball scenario as an example. Suppose that Michelle steps her free throw line to, and to take 13 shots. She's going to step up and shoot 13. Historically, she has been hitting 78.3% from the free throw line. Now we want to calculate various probabilities regarding how many successful shots she will have. So in other words, I want to find, like down here, probability she hits exactly 6. And there are other scenarios, scenarios that we will look at. So the first question is, can we use a binomial distribution to reasonably calculate those probabilities? Why? What this is saying is address the assumptions. Now this is important. If you're in my course, one of the courses that I actually teach, if you don't address your assumptions, you never get credit for the problem. You can't just use a binomial because that's what chapter we're working on today. You need to make sure your scenario actually fits a binomial. So the first assumption is that there are n independent identically repeated trials. You can, do not write n independent identically repeated trials. I will give you a zero for that. The, again, this is just my course. Okay, what you need to say is that there are n trials. See, n equals 13 and it's fixed. It's obvious because it says take 13 shots. Um, they're independent. Independent and identical. Because she's just shooting 13 times. I'll say if hits now don't know what will happen next. So this ad addresses the idea of uh, the independence and uh, identical. So that would satisfy the first assumption. And then let me erase that and go on to the next assumption. Um, because the next assumption, I'm going to say number two, is there's two possible outcomes. And I'm not going to write two possible outcomes. I'm going to say two outcomes. She either hits. It's either hit or a miss. There's my two outcomes. Next, probability of success equals, historically it's been 0.78, so that's what we're going to um, be using, 0.783, and that is pi, and this is reasonably reasonably constant. There's no reason to suspect that every time she's shooting, uh, this probability of success is changing. There's just no reason to think that. And then the last, I'm going to use x for my random variable. I'm going to say random variable x equals the number of hits. So what I've done here is I've taken those assumptions and then I've attached them. I've shown how this scenario satisfies them. Don't simply repeat the assumptions. I mean, anybody can write that down. That does not suggest for a moment that you actually thought about it and made sure that this scenario, this scenario is reasonably satisfied. That's what we need to do. Okay, so now that we have this, and by the way, I, I will, it's doubtful that I would ever, it's possible, but it's doubtful I would ever ask for the assumptions. I'm just simply expecting my students to always know they need to do it. Um, I will not, I mean, there may be some homework questions uh, that say do the assumptions and then go on and do some stuff. But no, um, I would never, like on an exam, ever ask that. You should simply know that if you're using this probability distribution, you better show that it's a reasonable thing to do. So just do it. Okay, so here our first scenario is find the probability she hits exactly 6. So this is the probability that x is equal to 6 given n equals 13 pi equals 0.783. So this completely specifies that binomial distribution. You give me n and pi, and then I can answer any question you could probably, possibly ask me. Now, what's it mean to hit exactly 6? That is this. This is a PDF scenario. Um, but again, at TC Stats, it doesn't say, are you doing a PDF or a CDF? It just, you just put in the necessary information. And here's actually a screenshot from TC Stats for this problem. 
Probability of success is 0 0.873. That's what that says. It may be a little bit blurry in the video. Number of trials N is 13. And we wanted exactly 6. So my lower bound is 6. And my upper bound is 6. And then it found the probability right there. 0 0.0090. This is the same as if you took 13 choose 6 times... 0.783 to the 6 times 1 minus 0 0.783 to the 7th. If you did that, that's the answer you're going to get. Okay, let's move on to another example using the same scenario. Find the probability she hits less than 6. Well, less than 6 would be... 0 through 5. Now, you notice in this last one, let's go back here. I wrote out 0 through 13, and I circled what I want. Circle, or box, whatever. And here, this is less than 6. So this is probability that x is less than 6, which is the same as the probability that x is less than or equal to 5. So I'm going to put a box around what I want. So this tells me, well, this is my lower bound. This is my upper bound. So I now translate that right there. There's my lower bound. There's my upper bound. And of course, this information is all the same. Now, actually, I should have addressed this earlier. Um, let's just say that um, you had a scenario where, there, where you know that the probability of success is, is say, 3 sevenths. Well, if the probability of success is 3 sevenths, this is the probability of success now. If you put that in the calculator, you get 0.4285711. Four, two, eight, six, yada, yada, yada. Now you could round this and put in like 0.428. I guess you'd round this if you go to four places, it'd be 4286. You could have used that here. Obviously, I'm talking about a whole new scenario. Or you could just put in three over seven. What TC Stats is going to look for is one or the other. It's going to look for values here, or it's going to look for a value here. Don't be putting in both. The whole idea there is that just gave a little more flexibility in, in terms of how you can enter probabilities of success. So when you do that, 0 through 5, 0 through 5, tap calculate, and there's a probability. That would be the same as doing it by hand to calculate 0 success, by hand 1 success, by hand 2 successes, all the way up by hand to 5 successes, and then adding them all up. Personally, I think, thank goodness for technology. Let's take a look at another example here. What's the probability she hits more than six? Well, what's it mean to be more than six? That means seven or more. Well, right here's my lower bound. Here's my upper bound. There's my lower bound. There's my upper bound. Here's a probability of success and the number of trials. Calculate. There's the answer. Probability x is greater than 6, which is the same as the probability x is greater than or equal to 7. It's kind of important to do this because when the lower bound 7, it calculates the probability of 7 successes and adds it to the solution. So if I want greater than 6, if I put a 6 here, that would not be greater than 6. It would, that would have included that 6, which would not be a good thing. From 4 to 9. Now, what's it mean to be from? Well, from means I'm going to start at 4. To 9, I'm going to add, go up to and include 9. From means start there and end there. Again, 4 to 9. So the probability here that 4 is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 9. This is telling me to include these endpoints. And again, there's the solution. Another quick example here, between 4 and 9. Well, between 4 and 9, it means that 4 and 9 are not included. What's between 4 and 9? Well, that's 5, 6, 7, and 8. So this would be the probability that 4 is strictly less than x, which is strictly less than 9, which I should write as 5 is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 8. And there's my endpoints, and again, there's the solution for it.
Here's the probability she hits less than four or greater than nine. Well, what's less than four? That's zero through three. Um, what's greater than nine? That's 10 through 13. So I need to do these. Now, there's a couple ways you can do this. I could use uh, TC stats to find this calculate or calculate this probability. I'm going to say this is probability number one. And then find this one separately as if it's a separate problem. That would be probability number two. Simply add them, and then that would give me the solution. Or I could recognize that the probability that x is less than or equal to 13 equals 1. So if I add up all of these, it's going to be 1. It's the entire sample space. Well, what if I just found this middle piece and subtract it from 1? So I'm going to say this is probability 3. So if I take, well, I'm going to write something slightly different here for a second. No, I'll leave it like that. I changed my mind. Okay, so the probability that I get these tails, these are actually called tail probabilities because this would be the left tail and this would be the right tail. So if I take one, the whole thing, and subtract from it the probability that 4 is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 9, so that's that middle piece I don't want, that will actually give me these end pieces. And I just want you to notice here, this is what I was going to write earlier, and I changed my mind, so I changed my mind again. I'm going to say the probability that 0 is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 3, plus the probability that 4 is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 9, plus the probability that 10 is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 13, equals 1. All I did is I partitioned this into these three spaces. See, I want these two pieces. So what happens if I subtract this from both? If I subtract a probability that 4 is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 9, and subtract it over here. Oops, that's supposed to be a 4. So I subtract it from both sides. I get the probability that 0 is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 3, plus the probability that 10 is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 13, equals 1 minus the probability, whoops, equals 4 is less than or equal to x, less than or equal to 9. That is this right here. So it's just a couple different ways to think about that. And this is actually the route that I took. And down here, this is that probability that um, 4 is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 9. That's what that is right there. Subtracted from 1, and there is my solution. There's no way to break it up and do it all right away in TC Stats. You can't tell it to go from 0 to 3 and then from what 10 to 13 or whatever it was. You can't tell even that you do that. You have to break it up in some way. So really what I've just done in all of these examples I just worked out, um, pretty much I, I'm having a tough time thinking of another type of probability question of a binomial showed you how to find which one was a left tail, a right tail, showed you how to find individuals such as six, uh, showed you how to find this probability in the, in the middle there. So any other question I could possibly dream of would be some type of combination of those.